This was the largest prospective controlled study specifically focused on long-term health outcomes after treatment of early Lyme disease in North America. This was a unique study because it was done prospectively, starting at the time of early diagnosis and treatment, and was controlled with non-Lyme infected patients for comparison. The results of the study were quite striking. Even in patients with early, well-diagnosed, and ideally treated Lyme disease, 14% of the patients, when examined six months later, continued to have uh, persistent symptoms. And this really fits into what we suspected, that the rates would be somewhere between 10 and 20%, consistent with other studies done, both in the United States and Europe. And these persistent symptoms were significant on well-validated instruments. So this wasn't just the mild fatigue and pain of everyday living. These were significant levels of fatigue and pain that impacted the patient's uh, quality of life. It's very important to know that this 14% number uh, was able then to be compared to the controls. And when we applied the same criteria to the controls, these levels of fatigue and pain were only present in 4% of the control population without Lyme disease. The symptoms in our patients are very real, and again, caused by the Lyme disease despite early diagnosis and treatment. It impacts the patient's quality of life, and it impacts a significant number of patients. The results of our study that 14% of patients with early Lyme disease develop post-treatment Lyme disease looked at ideally diagnosed patients with the earliest stages of Lyme disease and treated ideally right at the time of early diagnosis. It's likely an underestimate of the true rates, possibly more like 20 to 30 percent rates in complicated patients, such as those that don't get diagnosed and treated until they've developed neurologic disease or other later manifestations of Lyme disease. In the real world, patients often don't get diagnosed at the first stage. Patients often go for weeks or months or even years before their diagnosis and first treatment of Lyme disease. In the real world, patient populations are much more complicated. Patients have less ideal diagnosis and treatment. Our current paper does not tell us what causes the prolonged symptoms, but other studies we're conducting now look at the potential causes or etiologies. These range from a persistent infection hypothesis to persistent Borrelia antigens to persistent immune and inflammatory responses to the initial infection to rewiring of neural networks and neural pathways. And potentially all of those mechanisms in different patients or in different combinations. And understanding those will come out of our ongoing research that looks at the biologic specimens, the blood samples that were collected as part of the study. They're the key to understanding the mechanism of what drives these persistent symptoms. Our current study has direct implications for other related illness such as long-haul COVID, um, chronic fatigue syndrome. These associated illnesses share a lot of similarities. And our studies suggest that, again, infections trigger these illnesses that share a lot of the same patient attributes of the illness, fatigue, pain, cognitive dysfunction. This phenomenon can be triggered by several types of infectious diseases, Lyme disease, COVID, Epstein-Barr virus. There's something about these infections that can trigger long-lasting health problems that are very real and very impactful in the patients.
the impact on brain neurophysiology, the mechanisms of inflammation and its impact on uh, autonomic nervous system function may be one of the critical pathways that causes the chronic symptoms we see in our patients. There may be common mechanisms that underlie these illnesses. Our study, in combination with the other studies, really should end the controversy about whether post-treatment Lyme disease is a real illness. Chronic symptoms occur after Lyme disease and other infections. This has been validated now firmly in the literature with this study that we've published, and it's a very significant percentage, 14%, and severity of the symptoms. It's also very consistent with studies coming out of long-haul COVID that suggest that infections can trigger very real illnesses. Very importantly, our study was controlled with non-Lyme infected controls, showing that this is not just the baseline rate of symptoms in the general population. Very importantly, our study is controlled for mental health disorders, depression, traumatic life events. We're very confident that the symptoms in our patients are very real. They're not, quote, just in our patient's head. These are not psychosomatic symptoms and not symptoms of depression, the real outcome of their initial infection with Lyme disease.